thank somebody. That means they gave you something and you're supposed to give something back. You know what another word for that is? It's called exchange. You get something and you give something back. You exchange something. And so this Christmas season, we're going to talk about exchanging things. Like maybe we are coming here sad and we leave happy. Maybe we come here alone and we leave lifted up by what we've heard or sung. Because God sent his son. You know the, the scripture verse, John 3, 16? We're going to learn about that today. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave us something. And we're supposed to give something back. You know what that something is? Us. He wants us to be given to him as he gave his son to us. And that way we can lead people to Jesus when we have him in us. And so I pray that this Christmas season as we talk about joy and we talk about exchanging the sadness for joy, we'll learn how to be more joyful, okay? Is that a deal? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. As the boys and girls come, they might be kind of tired. They might not be looking forward to school tomorrow. But God, there's so much to be joyful for because you gave your son in exchange for our sins. So God, let us be thankful for you and for what you've done for us every single day. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You know, God come to the world for us, sending his son for us. That should be something we're joyful about. So that's what we're going to sing about. You can stand, sit, do whatever it is you need to do. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain, firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah! 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 makes me sing hallelujah 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 your love makes me sing your love is surprising i can feel it rising all the joy that's growing deep inside of me and every time i see you all your goodness shines through i can feel this god song rising up in me Let's trade our sorrows this morning for the joy of the Lord. How about that? And I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm trading my Joy of the Lord. 
the joy and sing yes Lord let the pain and the shame and the struggle that you face in life rob the joy of the Lord from you, okay? That's what that whole song's about. Let's just ask that the Holy Spirit would come into this place and speak to us and fill our lives with His wisdom, with His words, with His truth. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close Nothing can compare your living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, when my heart becomes free. Shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Sing it with your heart this morning, church. No 
share a song with you. It's really about thanking Jesus for the cross. So it's more of a Thanksgiving song, but since we just had Thanksgiving, and I pray that you were thankful this break, this Thanksgiving, for everything that God has blessed you with. So as I sing this, I want you to just listen.
Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for the price you paid for us. Giving up your life to save the lost. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. God, we're so thankful for the cross, for everything that you've done for us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, John. Thanks, praise team. Thanks, church. Kind of ringy out there, but he'll get that fixed. I know you don't want to hear me that well. Am I interrupt here? Oh, praying time. Hey, it's good to be here on a Sunday morning after Thanksgiving. Hopefully, you had a reason to be thankful for. You paused on Thursday with the family, or you went to be part of the family, and you might have been part of that family that people roll your eyes at. Go ahead and raise your hand if you're one of those. Yeah, you're one of those. Or you might have had that part of the family show up that you rolled your eyes at, but you were still thankful. And this is kind of a jump from Thanksgiving, but to see how petty we become, I'm, I'm sitting down here worshiping, thinking, I can't worship, we only have one TV. Have you been thinking that? I can't worship. There's no, not two TVs. And, and the thing is, without even TVs, we should be able to worship. Without the technology that we have, we should be able to work. We have our voice. We can sing. We can make a joyful noise to the Lord. And so I get kind of selfish here, and, and I'm not a shopper. I call myself a hunter. I have already know the game I'm going to bag. I go, I shoot it, I bag it, I come home. But I'm thankful for hunters like Chuck Knave. He's kind of a hunter shopper. And instead of buying a $3,500 TV, which I had picked out to go exactly with this one, because that's what that one cost, he got the shopping on the World Wide Web, found a sale. See, this is how sales go. If you get, find a sale, then you've got to go to this site to get the coupon, print the coupon out, bring the coupon in between 1 and 3 in the morning, and then you can get $10, $10 off if you purchase a $100 item. But not with Chuck Knave. He found that this same TV that I got for 35 he's found it for 1995 on sale at Walmart I found the three-year warranty for 250 bucks he found it for 99 so this week we get a new TV and it'll be up there next Sunday and all will be right with the world but that shouldn't regulate my joy and that's what I want to talk to you about we're gonna take this transition of thankfulness to joy and that word exchange like I talked to the kids this morning about giving and getting something we're pretty good about getters but how good are we at givers and to think about this joy that that our hearts here's the word should be filled with but isn't let me just see if I can get the church answer this morning you ready for the church answer here's the church question how many of you are joyful this morning raise your hand church answer yeah. Now, how many in your heart go, uh, bah humbug on that? Kim and I weren't so joyful this morning. You want to know why? Her alarm set at around 6. Mine set at 6.10. Mine went off. I'm like, eh, kring. Then I kind of rolled over for like 10 seconds and looked at the clock again. It was 6.55. And we're like, ah! And Kim, Kim's words were, I ain't never going to make it. I'm like, okay, I will. Whoosh, whoosh. I was done. And she buzzed around like a tornado and she made it. But man, that affected my emotional status this morning. I was just kind of frazzled. I was like in a panic. I'm like, oh, things aren't working right. Get here, there's a little glitch in the first service. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to steal my joy. Have you been there? Have you allowed somebody to steal that joy? to do something or say something or park somewhere or sit somewhere or, or walk in with something you're like oh and joy is not happiness happiness is an emotion joy is what we have in us we have it I, I wonder how many would exchange bitterness for blessings I would how many would exchange joyfulness for joylessness I would I want to be joyful 
I looked up some of these sayings here, some of these phrases, but let's just get to that John 3.16 that we all don't know. Because I don't think we live by it. For God so loved the world that He gave. He didn't barter. He didn't negotiate. He didn't sit down and go, do you want Him or not? He gave His one and only Son. His one and only Son, that, that whosoever, that's us, might receive Him and have eternal life. And in that eternal life, we get to give back. We get to show other people, not just on Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, why we're so joyful. Or are we? So let's get the real question out here. How many of you have been angry the last 24 hours? A little bit of anger, kind of, a little bit of upsetness. Really? Okay, come on, you're lying now. Come on. See, we just, something, it, I don't know about you, but somehow or another, we'll be talking about somebody or something or some event, and all of a sudden, oh, did you see? I can't believe, I, I wouldn't mention the, the cowboys, but no said about that. But what about those Red Raiders? They hung on for a minute and 47 seconds and pulled out a win when loss was inevitable. And now, golly, they get to go to the burrito bowl or something spectacular, <laughs> something high-end. And yet sometimes, I mean, really, honestly, church, how many of you have yelled at the car in front of you? Oh, would you just hurry up? And that did all the good of what? They stuck out their head, no, I'm hurrying! <laughs> and I know we've yelled at the TV at least once, haven't we? And that person, that referee went, you're right. And it robbed us of our joy because they didn't acknowledge who we are. And yet God said, I'm giving you my one and only son. That's a gift I'm giving you. And you know what we got to give him? Our muck, our mire, our filth. It doesn't sound really good, does it? You get everlasting life. He gets our junk. That's, that's the trade-off. That's the exchange that he wanted. I believe that's the best exchange we could have ever wanted. But I think it ties into joy. What is joy in your life? Is it the nice car, pickup, house, clothes, perfect kids? Go ahead and Rob, raise Perfect kids. Angelic job that just people just ooh over you at work and you're the best employee ever is that your joy it shouldn't be because it changes here's some definitions c.s lewis said this the joy is the seriousness of heaven god was serious when he created joy think about that it wasn't just a fill-in love joy love joy peace patience think about that love first then joy Mother Teresa said these words about joy. Joy is prayer. It's strength. It's love. Joy is a net of love by which we catch souls. Wow. Maybe you're into acronyms. J-O-Y. Jesus offers you joy. <clears throat> and you think about this. Well, Steve, I'm battling finances. How can I be joyful over that? Because the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills sees your financial stress. And as fun as it was to get into debt, you got to work to get out of debt. Amen, Dave Ramsey? There you go. And you might have to sell off that $55,000 pickup and get you that $15,000 pickup to get out of debt. But you know what? You'll be a lot more joyful being out of debt than in debt. I've been on both sides as a banker and as a borrower... Let me tell you, being on the banker's side, giving is joyful, but getting it back when they don't want to pay for it is tough. It's tough when people don't want to find the joy in the commitment that they've made. I think about the, what, what makes you joyful. It says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That way, this morning when you got up, there wasn't a single person in his house this morning that grumbled, right? Go, everybody amen. Yeah. Getting up in the morning is tough. Getting it all together is tougher. Getting the day's events after a holiday is tough. Getting the house converted over from Thanksgiving 
to the Christmas theme. How many decorators for Christmas are there? Just, really? You humbuggers. Golly, where's your Christmas joy? Why is it, church, that we are not more joyful? And let me tell you, it's not because of the news or the weather. It's not because of your job, your co-worker, your spouse, your kids. Let's just be honest, it's because of you. You are choosing not to find the joy of the Lord. Yet You profess to have Him. You've accepted Him as your Savior and your Lord. And yet you're not joyful about that. Every single day. You know, even if we had to walk in here with a cane, thank God that He created somebody who created a cane so I could walk in here. Think about that for a minute. When you had to rummage through your closet, go through the, the dresser drawers trying to find something to wear instead of going, well, I guess I'll wear this again. And you have to be joyful that you got so much to look after. And get in that car. It might spit or sputter, but you got in transportation and you didn't walk here. Why aren't we joyful, church? I was in a Sunday school class this morning trying to find me a donut. Too late for that. I had to get me a nugget. You know, if you snooze, you lose, they say. And I just said, you need, you need more donuts in this class. And I think about the things that convert our joy to sadness, our, our joy to anger even. One person driving in front of you, and you're all over their business. Why? You know you're going to roll up on them at the first stoplight. They're going to be right there. What's the big deal? You're standing in the checkout line and you know the person in front of you at the 10 item or less has 12. And you were infuriated. I was actually there the other day and I counted mine at the 10 item line. I had nine. She goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm counting. She goes, you're kidding me. I'm like, no. It says 10 items or less. She goes, I don't think I've had someone do that. Well, that's what you get when you get me, man. You get 10 items or less. It says that I do that. And you think about the things that rob you of your joy or you allow it to be robbed. Here, think about these journeys that we take in Proverbs 10, 28. The prospect, that means you're looking for, the prospect of the righteous is joy. Some of us do have to look long and hard for it in the mornings and at night. You kind of look over your day. Anybody going to hang Christmas lights on your house? Anybody like to have somebody like hang Christmas lights on your house? I was up there yesterday. This old, decrepit, creaky old body was moaning and puffing, but I was going to get those Christmas lights up. And sure enough, I got them up and I plug them in. It's like one out, two out, seven out, nine out. But on the ground, every one of them worked. And I was like, golly, I cannot believe what happened between the ground and the house. I'm like, oh, Steve, really? You've got to find some joy. If you didn't want them up there, you shouldn't have put them up there. You should be happy about this. So Kim walks out and there's still two out. I'm like, she goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm changing them. I don't care if it's dark. I'm going to get on the roof. If I fall off, Jamie Humphreys will preach for me. I don't care. And I'm like, I'm going to find some joy in this thing. And I've already got my plan. Somebody plotted in my head. If you come out in your house, you've got all white lights and there's one red. I did that. Because you're going to be joyful about that. And think about those things that you just get grumbly and rumbly over that truly doesn't make a difference in the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're all about. The prospect of the righteous us is joy. That's our life. Finding that joyful life. Not opening the door and kicking the dog and yelling and screaming about this or that. God didn't create us. But George Barna created surveys. And that guy's a survey machine. He did a survey of 1,011 people. I, I don't know why that, but 1,011 people. And this is what he found out some results and questions about Christ and his birth. Real quick, he said, 67% believe in the entire Christmas story is accurate. 67%. 24% say it's just a Christian belief. So we've got 24% of the population that says, hey, it's just our belief. We've got a mission field out there. But George Barna also asked this question, what if you're right? What if Jesus was never born? What would the world be like? Have you thought of that? Besides lost, this is what some answers were. 
63% said the world would be less charitable. 61% said the world would be less kind. 59 less personal. 58% said less tolerant. 47% said more wars. But 75% said people would be less joyful without Jesus. 75% said less joyful without Jesus. I don't know if you've ever sat down in a morning or a night and read the Bible and just felt good. God's word just hit your soul where it needed to be touched and hit and moved and you were at peace, you were at calm, you found that serene place because life was a turmoil, life was upside down. That's what he wants us to do. Come back to that place where we were joyful at one time. You remember being a child and doing childlike things, running around and just laughing and carrying on? Do you remember when you prayed and it was there? God was there. Amen. You remember when you were joyful about praying? I don't know if you have one of these prayers in your family, but we've got a prayer in our family named Kira Jowers. And Kira Jowers, when she goes to pray, will pray for birthdays and opening presents. We'll pray for the weather. We'll pray for the stuffed animals. Somewhere in there, she's going to say, and the food. And then she's going to start all over again. A couple minutes later, and amen. And I could go, hey, that's enough of that. We just got to get that prayer done so we could eat. But I ain't about to. It is, we always kind of crack an eye open at each other like, where's the signal? When's the... But let me tell you, folks, the alternative to that is not having that joyful prayer going on. If you haven't taught your kids to pray, you're missing a blessing of joy. If you just blast in the kitchen and plop it, pound it down your throat, burp and sleep, you're, you're missing the joy of family unity. Hopefully last Thursday you sat down with somebody. You sat at a table somewhere and you fellowshiped with family that you normally don't do. And maybe this Thanksgiving there was that, that empty seat that you were saddened over. But yet, God gave you those memories to rejoice over of the many thanksgivings that you had. Life is so short. It's so short, church. We live in a place of instantaneous, fast-paced. I don't know if you're a product of me of the 60s, but there was a pretty radical comedian. His name is George Carlin. Kind of an edgy kind of guy, kind of rough. But he nailed it when he wrote something called The Paradox. The Paradox was just something amazing that he, when he got his life right, he kind of looked back around. You remember doing that? When you got your life right, when you, when you got out of the muck and the mire and you, you got on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and you look back and go, huh, I was a messed up person, but I'm getting my life right. Well, that's what George did. He kind of sat down and he wrote this thing called The Paradox. I'm going to give you an excerpt of The Paradox. He says, we have taller buildings and shorter tempers, wider freeways, but narrower viewpoints. We spend more and have less. We buy more and enjoy less. We have bigger houses and smaller families, more conveniences, but less time to be convenient. We have more degrees, but less sense, more knowledge, but less judgment, more experts and more problems, more medicine, but more sickness. We drink too much, smoke too much, spend too much, laugh too little. We drive too fast, get too angry. We stay up too late, get up too tired. We read the Bible too little and we pray much too little. And he goes on to say these words. We talk too much, we don't listen enough, we don't love enough, but we hate too much. Hate, not ache. We listen about how others are living and become jealous that we don't have that life. We've added years to life, but not life to our years. We've been all the way to the moon and back, but we can't say hi to our next door neighbor. We've conquered outer space, but we have not conquered our inner being. We've done big things, but we seem to worship a small God. We've cleaned up the air, but we've polluted our soul. We've conquered the atom, but not prejudice. We write more, but we learn less. 
We build more superpowered computers for more information, yet we communicate less. There are times of fast food and even faster digestion so we can get our things done faster while our body tries to digest the fast foods. These are the days of two incomes and double the divorce. Fancier houses but more broken homes. These are the days of quick trips, disposable diapers, throwaway morality, pills that make you happy and pills that make you sad. It's a time where there's much in the showroom but we don't have much to show. And he closes with these words. I remember the warm hugs. I remember the joyful times in my life. I wonder what happened to the joy. Has that become us? When we got up this morning, was there even a little bit of joy that it was Sunday morning after a holiday or it was, oh God, I'm tired. I'll just, I'll just log on. I'll just live stream it. When we come into the house of the Lord, do we see that joy in us, around us? Do they see that joy in us? Would anybody outside these doors come inside the doors if they saw how you came inside the doors? Would they know that you were joyful coming to church? Did they see it? Did they sense it? Did they hear it? Did they feel it? Was there a rumble or a grumble? Was there a rolling of the eyes? Was there a nodding of the head? Hey man, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Because I think about the stories that come out at Christmas time. You know, the Grinch, Ebenezer Scrooge. I mean, really, parents, do you have a child named Ebenezer? No. Why? Because it's associated with grumbling, mean. And in Ebenezer Scrooge, the Christmas Carol, think about that. He started out right. He was a good, hardworking man who had the love of his life and he let work take it over. And he ended up being a miserable man until three spirits came and visited him one night. And then he got it right at the end. Or the Grinch. The Grinch was laughed at in school and he became a mean, nasty person most of his life. And at the end, he thought he robbed Christmas, but it still came because they had joy. They had joy in their life. I, I just wonder joyful exchange is the season of what we're going to be in what what do you want to exchange what are you tired of carrying around that that jesus said i i took it i put it on the cross why why did you take it down why aren't you joyful in me anymore quit looking at the tangible things those things you have to touch or the neighbor's yard or their driveway Look within to see if we have the joy of the Lord. In Psalm 66, it starts out, Shout for joy to God. Now we'll shout at a football game or a sport. We'll shout at our kids. We'll shout at our spouse. We'll shout at the neighbor's dog next door. We'll shout at that steer running at you, scaring you to death. But will we shout for joy to God? Will we? Hey God, thanks. Thanks for the family that came and left my house a disaster. Nobody helped me clean up, put up, pack up. Thanks God, really. But oh my gosh, get us in traffic. Get us at Black Friday. Wait till Cyber Monday and how many of us are going to pound on the keyboard thinking that letter is going to go through faster and harder and your order be completed quicker. What is it, church? What's, what's happened to the joy of the Lord? It's supposed to be our strength. Life is here, a moment, gone. What are you joyful over? Do you go and stand in front of your kingdom and assess all that you have, knowing that none of it will be in heaven? Or are you thankful for the things that you have a chance to get to heaven, like your spouse, your kids, your co-workers, your neighbors? That's what's important. That's what this joyful exchange journey is going to be. We're going to exchange that bitterness, folks. If i got to beat it out of you, we're going to exchange that bitterness for blessings. We're going to exchange that joyless, joyless life for a joy-filled life, overflowing abundantly. For that's why God gave His one and only Son. 
So I guess the question today is, are you? Or maybe a simpler question is, what has robbed you of your joy? Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come in your house and, and maybe we put on a really, really good show. We polish up real good. We sit, we even nod a little bit of what the preacher says. And then we bark and bite as we leave. We grumble and we groan when we should be joyful in receiving and exchanging that bitterness for the blessings that Jesus went to the cross for. God, you gave. You didn't have to. You gave in exchange that we might give you our muck, our mire, our, our hate, our hurt. And we can break any chain that Satan thinks he has wrapped around us. He has no dominion over us, no power within us. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I exchange that bitterness for the blessings. I exchange that weakness for your strength. I exchange that darkness for your light. And I exchange joylessness for joyfulness. So, Father, your family is here. Your children are here. I don't know what they need to exchange, but Kim and I are here if anybody needs to pray with us. The altar is wide open. May we exchange that brokenness for blessings. In the name of Jesus, I pray this. Amen. absolutely no reason to leave his house without his joy this morning it's up to you to accept that that overflowing washing away your sin joy you are worthy for he went to the cross for you we sing one more verse you ask for that joy and he will fill you to overflowing you come now
most gracious and loving Father, I thank you for the day you've given us, Father God. And Lord, I thank you for the message provided by Brother Steve today. And Lord, we're, th we're thankful for family. We're thankful for the opportunity to spend time with family and friends this week, Father God. And we're thankful for your, you sending your son to die on the cross for each and every one of our sins. Uh, Lord, I pray for those that couldn't be here today. Play, I pray you lift them up and you, you bless them. Uh, as we head into this time of offering, I just pray you bless the gift and the giver. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Just one last announcement before we get out of here, and that's if you're part of the Hanging of the Greens tonight, rehearsal is at 4.30, but you need to be here at 4.15 so we can start at 4.30. And so I know you. That's why I'm saying 4.15. So wear your Christmassy stuff, and we'll have the scripts up here that you need. The students and the children are going to be passing or bringing down all the poinsettias, so if we can get them here at 4.15 as well so we can start at 4.30, end at 5.30, Hanging of the Greens at 6.00. Mulligan Stew Fellowship right after that. You want to be part of that? It's a huge blessing. You come and be blessed. John? Why don't you stand and grab a hand? We're going to pray out of here this morning instead of sing, if that's okay. Let me pray for you. Father God, I pray that we would leave with joy. God, that we would leave knowing that you are the source of that joy. God, that it's not our happiness. So Lord, I pray that you help us continue to grow in our joy through you and with you. In your name I pray, amen. Have a great Sunday.